Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to my shop. Before I get to the subject matter of this particular video, I want to give a shout out to an organization up in Indiana that is picking up on a annual show that used to be the names show, the North American Model Engineering Society. For some reason, I didn't do the research on it, but for some reason for 2024, they've decided not to come back. Well, I think that's a tragedy because there's a lot of fantastic craftsmen in the world in the United States all over that used to come and display some amazing, amazing creations from steam engines to warplanes to soldiers that are hand painted. I mean, geez, this is precision at the next level. So if you're into model engineering, like you see on this channel and other channels on the internet, this is the kind of show that you would just walk through and just, just with your mouth hanging open for the whole eight hours you were there or however long you decided to walk through. Anyway, this year it's being called the Indiana Engine Show. And I got a couple of these guys right here that I will give you close-ups on so you can see the website, uh, you can see the internet links, you can see the QR codes, the dates and such. So give them a call, check it out, register, display your stuff, go as a, an attendee, just walk through and marvel at the talent of the guy living next door, right? You never know. Anyway, there you go. That is my shout out for the Indiana Engine Show. And with any kind of luck, I probably will attend. Don't know if I'll display. And I really don't know the dates that I'll be there, but I will absolutely give it my best effort to walk in the front door and smile at a few people. There you go. Let's get to the meat and potatoes of this video. I think you're going to like it. It's very helpful. Thanks, guys. This will be a short, sweet, and to-the-point video on how to draw liquid with a vacuum pump. You do not want to take directly from the vacuum pump into your liquid, or it's going to suck the liquid into the pump, into the oil, and you're going to have problems. If you want to use your vacuum pump as a siphon, you're going to need a secondary vessel. You're going to need a jar. Jar with a couple of holes in the top. Take your main line from your pump and stick it into one of the holes in the top of the jar. Make sure it doesn't go too far in. You want it to just barely superficial, nice fit. Second line coming out of the top of the jar into the liquid. Now, as you can see, nothing's happening because there's a third hole in the top. Right now, the vacuum pump is drawing the air out of here, but it's going back in through that hole. So as soon as I block that hole, it's going to try to come back in through this hose. And there it comes. And you can regulate the speed with which it's coming back into the containment vessel by just jogging your finger on or off of that hole. When it's getting close to the top, take the finger off. Simple. Turn the pump off, dump it, lather, rinse, and repeat, guys. That is a great way to double utilize a vacuum pump to evacuate liquids as needed. Do not, once again, do not let the primary line from the vacuum pump go too far down or as this is filling up, this line will engage the liquid and the liquid will go into the pump. Don't let that happen. Vacuum pumps are for air, not for liquid. This is also the kind of pump that you would use if you wanted to make a vacuum plate fixture for machining thin or delicate parts. This is a three cubic feet per minute, two stage Pittsburgh automotive style vacuum pump about 130 bucks get it at uh, harbor freight northern tool and such check online for the best deal i hope that helps that secondary vessel is an absolute must and it's a great trick to turn that into something useful for pulling liquids take care guys wherever you are in the world hope you're well happy and safe all of the above i'm joel pie advanced innovations austin texas i'm out